We are in an ancient sassafras grove. It's an incredible spot here. It's the biggest sassafras trees I've ever seen. I don't really know its age. This gift of sassafras, we're gonna get into it. I wanna help you ID it as well. So here we are with the bark, by the way. We normally don't shoot with an iPhone, but what's happening is the storm has descended and our camera equipment, we gotta be careful with it. So here we are, we're gonna do the best we can. So take a look at this incredible bark, this crazy, chunky, gray, brown, with red hues coming through. It's super chunky, so you can see that these ridges, these ridges curve and interlace, and they actually crack, they break. And then there are these deep furrows as well. So you always want to know, when you have sassafras, that you're seeing a deeply furrowed and ridges that interlock. Now this tree, because it's so old, is really showing the bark in a very exaggerated way. When you find young ones, which is more what we see, the bark looks like this, but it's it's tighter, meaning that it's not quite it's not quite as developed. And maybe we'll get a shot of that for you in a second. Um, so also, let's while we're here just discuss why I want to share with you about sassafras. Sassafras albidum is a gift in so many ways. Most folks know it for its roots and its root bark, for root beer and for things like that. Concern around consuming the roots is on the table, so we need to investigate that more. But I want to share with you now in this mid-spring moment where the storm is about to pop is that the leaves of sassafras are what we're after. So these leaves, these beautiful leaves are what we eat in salad. I call this a salad tree. And it's also what we dry and make filet with and put into stews like gumbo. So at this moment, we have a salad tree in our midst. And I'm gonna actually pick some leaves and perhaps we'll go inside and use camera equipment to give you some better ID. Another thing to notice here whenever you see sassafras twigs that they have a green, a greenish hue to them. And then when you scratch that, just a nice little gentle scratch and you sniff it, it smells amazing, refreshing, lemony, citrusy. So the gifts of sassafras are yes, in its root and its bark, but also in these leaves. The rain is on us now. Let's harvest some leaves and continue. We're in the truck, waiting for the storm to die down and it's not dying down, so I'm gonna go and grab three kinds of leaves that grow on the sassafras tree. And we're gonna detail those for you in a moment. Here I go. Goods. Okay. So here's what I brought back. Not typical, here we are inside the truck. And this I just plucked off of the tree. And it's a great example of the three kinds of leaves that grow on sassafras. So let's take, so this one is the mitten. That's a one lobe. And then this one is the two the two lobes that looks kind of like a fork sort of a pitchforky thing and then the ovate one that's just straight up no lobing i'm going to put them on this black cloth so you can see them all laid out and get the sense of what i'm talking about a little more um and look at that beauty by the way what's falling off here is the yellow um, flowers, yellow flowers. So, okay. But that, can you see that amazingness? So there's three varieties of leaves, three types of leaves on that one sassafras tree. 
Um, this is the one that's most common. It's the ovate or eggy shape. And then you see the mitten once in a while that has one lobe. And then you see the pitchfork one, which has two lobes. So that's pretty unique to a tree. And if you can see these three on a tree, you know you have sassafras. Also, you want to note that the leaf margin of sassafras is entire. There are no teeth. So you're always going to make sure you see that as well. On all of them, lobed or unlobed, there are no teeth. And when you crush this leaf, it's nice and fragrant. It's aromatic. So you want to make sure you see that. And there was something else I wanted to say. These leaves, by the way, will alternate up the sassafras twig. They are not opposite, so they will be alternate in leaf arrangement. There you got it. By the way, at this time, these leaves are so tender and wonderful that they are their salad moment. Later in the season, they'll become tougher. Still, you can eat new growth from the sassafras tree. So the leaves just need to be tender enough for you to enjoy in your salad. Of course, you can also cook these. Um, there's, a little bit of, <laughs> there's a little bit of a story that I thought I should share. Quick one, I know it's hot in here. Oh, look, the storm is maybe over. <laughs> and so here we are getting all hot and sweaty in here. But I just wanted to share about this tree and how it actually was my dinner a bunch of times. So there's this amazing ethnobotanist named Francois Couplan. He and I were teaching at the International Herb Symposium in two, ooh, 20 plus years ago, I can't remember, at um, this college campus. The food wasn't so great, sorry, I have to confess. And so what we would do is we would go to the edge of the campus where the wild sassafras trees grew. And, and this would be in early June and we would gather the tender leaves, add some beautiful vinaigrette dressing and we would have our salad. So that was a bit of how we lived through the conference or nourished ourselves. Sorry to say that the food wasn't so good, but it wasn't, <laughs> okay. And so sassafras is an amazing tree that I hope that you will get to meet, that you will find in your neighborhood. Um, it's an understory tree. It's all about, I, again, you're going to find it throughout the United States in the central um, and eastern portions of North America and also in Romania, which was curious. I looked up in the world map of sassafras and may sassafras enrich your life. And if you've enjoyed this and you'd like more, check out our online course, Wild Food Health Boosters and Herbal Remedies at wildfoodhealthboosters.com. See you next time.